And today we are going to be taking a look at this cool thing called a current transformer and using it to measure the current produced by a microwave oven transformer that has been rewound to be a high current transformer that can melt nails and coins. Let's get started. You ready guys? Oh crap! That was over 600 amps, do you see that? Tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner, tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. Now basically what a current transformer does is you connect it in series with whatever is drying current. And what it will do is it will convert the high current down into a low current flow that can be measured by a small meter. So this transformer could be used for something that draws a very large current, such as my rewound microwave transformer, or such as the entire current draw of a house at any given moment, which I think is pretty cool. This current transformer I found at the electronics warehouse. All right, so this is the label. As you can see, it's made by General Electric. It is has some weird model names. Its maximum ratio is uh, 600 amps, and it has an output of 5 amps. So the ratio is 120 to 1, and it's rated for uh, 50 to 60 cycles, so that's basically the alternating current uh, frequency it's rated for, and it's uh, rated for a 600 volt circuit. So it works on any circuit, but maximum is 600 volts. So there it is. That's pretty cool. Now the reason there's a piece of copper right here across the wire and a dead short is because this transformer will not be very good if these two wires are open because there's going to be a current flowing across here. Now if you took a, this wire off and there was no current flowing between these two terminals, the voltage on these two terminals would very quickly climb to a very high voltage and that may break down the windings inside and have arcs crossed and that would not be a good thing. So in most transformers, there's a core that looks like two E's put together. And it has this little thing going around the outside. And in the center of the transformer, you have a few coils of wire here and a few coils of wire here. And you have the input voltage and the output voltage. Now in this current transformer, we're going to have just one turn as the primary turn. And that one turn is just going to go in this little tiny loop around the transformer. And we're looking at the transformer from the side right now, where the E goes through this middle part, and these are the two sides. And then we are going to have a number of turns right here uh, around the center too. So that way we have this large turn creating magnetic flux inside the core of the transformer, and that magnetic flux is inducing a magnetic field into this smaller coil. Now we can use the Amper turns equation to establish the amount of turns in the secondary and primary coils and prove that this current transformer works. So the Amper turns equation is you have the magne magnetomotive force in Amper turns and that just is force and that equals the current times the number of turns. So force equals current times turns. And so we can set these equal to each other where IT equals IT, I2T, I2T2. I I and let's say we have the first coil right here. We have the current flowing through as 120 amps or let's say 600 amps because that's the maximum rated current. We have 600 amps times number of turns is one equals 5 amps times x amount of turns. So 5 times 120 is 600. So we have 600 over 5 equals x, which is 120. So we have 120 turns on the secondary coil of this current transformer according to the amper turns equation. All right, enough with the maths. We're going to see this thing in action. So I, I got this really cool AC ammeter, and look at this, lucky for us, it goes from 0 to 5 amps. So from 0 to the maximum rated current rating of this transformer. So we're going to hook up this transformer to this ammeter so we can get a proper reading off of it. Luckily this little ammeter came with a nice little box full of screws and washers we can crack open. Hopefully these won't go everywhere. Oh, 
cool. This thing looks awesome. So I've got the ammeter mounted right now on the front of the current transformer. Let me show you how I mounted that by disconnecting my camera from the tripod. So as you can see, we have the uh, copper wires back here. And the copper wires are connecting from these screw terminals to these screw terminals on the transformer. So the current's going to be flowing through this current meter and back into the transformer. So from this current meter, we should be able to measure from 0 to 5, between 0 and 20, 0 and 600 amps, which is really cool. Now I've got my microwave transformer here that is rewound, and I'll be hooking up this wire to one side of the current transformer with a big clip. All right, we'll finally settle the age-old argument about how many, how much current it takes to melt a nickel, and hopefully I won't blow my breaker. Here we go. You ready, guys? Oh, crap. That was over 600 amps. Did you see that? That's ridiculous. I can't believe that thing went over 5 amps over its rated current. It's not even hot. That's still very crazy. All right, we're going to give this another go with a length of copper wire. Oh. Dang it. Still on fire. Still red hot. Alright, so let's see if this will work with my Marriott. So I have the voltage turned down to about 25 volts. So hopefully we shouldn't get as much current flowing through. Hopefully I won't burn out my very egg. Oh, there we go. Now we're talking. That's cool. That's approximately, uh... That really tanks the very egg, but we're getting a current reading. Alright, uh, if each of these is 120 amps, and that goes up to approximately 240 amps. My Variac dips significantly. Let's turn up the voltage a little bit. Hopefully it won't burn out the Variac again. That's cranking. That's cranking at a high current right there. That's going to approximately, let's see, 1, 240. Uh, that's going at approximately maybe three, 300 amps. Half the rated current. And my Variac right now is only at about 49 amps. Let's crank it 49 volts. Let's crank it up to 50 volts. This may burn out the Variac very well. Let's try it now. That's three and a half. So that's 120. That's 120 to 40. 360. That's maybe 410 amps. So that's pretty cool. At 50 volts, that's 410 amps through there, through the Variac. Let's see if it works at the quarter right here. No, the quarter will not get hot on 300 amps. Now what does happen, in fact, is you can hear it sizzle when I touch it with a wet finger. Alright, I think it's high time to make a quarter glow. I am not going to use the current transformer for this, just as kind of a base plate to sit everything on. Okay, that's not good at all. We had some mishaps here. Okay, turning off the transformer. Well, I'm going to turn off the camera right now. Oh, I dropped my microphone on the floor. Well, I guess the uh, current transformer setup is pretty cool. I was able to um, show that the current that comes from a microwave transformer is extremely a large amount. Oh, my room really reeks now oh, smoke. Anyway, I was able to show you that uh, at half power or 50 volts from my Variac, we were able to pull like 400 volts through this current transformer, which is a lot, 400 amps. 
So that means that when this microwave transformer is just pumping current through something, it'll pump like a thousand amps through it, which is crazy. I can't believe I went over the level on this 600 amp current transformer. Now, what would be really cool with this current transformer is if I could tap it into the mains current coming from the house. Because the 600 amps flowing through the breaker box into power our house, well, actually, there's a 200 amp limit on there. But it would be interesting to see how much current uh, my house in total draws. So I may do that in a later video, but that may not be the best because I'd be tapping into uh, high voltage lines and pulling out breakers, and that may not be the best thing. Anyway, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for next time.